right. At the same time, uh, Andrew Yang was asked about uh, whether he'd consider being serving as vice president mm -hmm. specifically for Joe Biden. Let's take a listen. I will say the only person who's taken me aside and said that we need to really worry about the fourth industrial revolution because it uh, could potentially tear our country apart is Joe Biden. Joe Biden pulled you aside. That's an intriguing. Would you serve on a Biden ticket? You said you were open to anything. I, I'm, I'm definitely open to working with Joe. We've actually talked about it. Wow. We actually That's, talked about yeah. it. Wow. <laughs> that was interesting, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just pretty much said, yeah, when I'm, whenever I drop out, I'm just jumping over to the Biden camp and jumping on his plane. I mean, it, here's, and I think I mentioned it earlier, Andrew Yang brings a lot to the ticket, to a Biden ticket, mm -hmm. balances youthfulness, balances uh, diverse, yeah. ethnic diversity, yeah. Yeah. balances that business-mindedness. Um, I mean, certainly he's mm -hmm. only a, a single-minded uh, or single-issue candidate, but that issue resonates with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think he brings that youthful energy and that enthusiasm that you're talking about. Question is, though, is Yang still far enough to the left that it would still wrangle Bernie supporters over, wrangle mm -hmm. Warren supporters over? And I don't think he is. He no, has he a lot support of crossover yeah. support from Bernie. I would also dispute that he's a, a single issue um, candidate. Uh, he obviously UBI is at the center, mm -hmm. but he's got a lot of ideas and a lot of different things. I do think I think this is consistent with Andrew's brand, though. I mean, he's a guy who he go he'll go on Fox News, he'll go talk to Joe Rogan, he'll go you know he'll go debate. Talks to everybody. But he talks yeah. to everybody, mm -hmm. right? He's he's open to talking to and having a conversation with and potentially serving with anyone. So I thought it was very consistent with basically who he is. And that was a pretty shrewd political move because talking about Biden potentially putting him on the ticket kind of validates him as a serious candidate. Sure. And yeah. So now That's moving true. forward, I mean, people didn't expect him to make it this far. No one thought he would be mm -hmm. on the stage. Yeah for the fourth or fifth debate. And so now, not only is he gonna be on the stage, but he's talking about potentially being a VP nominee to someone like Biden. I mean, that in and of itself uh, creates a huge narrative around him. It's just such a strange well ticket to, I mean, you know, the former it's vice president. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Andrew is so much of the future. Like, that's so much what mm -hmm. he represents. I guess it would make sense from a strategic perspective for Biden, but it would really dilute the Yang brand, because, I mean, that is just so kind of the opposite of what Joe Biden is well, all about. If you're just doing the political yeah. calculus of, like, what do we have and what do we need? Like, yeah. we have this establishment. We need the grassroots energy. Right. Mm -hmm. Andrew Yang definitely has the grassroots yeah, energy. It. Is true. it going to show up for a Biden-Yang ticket? And maybe he feels like probably, Yang actually, would, yeah, probably maybe would. Would, br would bring some of the Silicon Valley in in interest. Yeah. Um, you know, but does he bring a lot of other stuff other than just, like, the cosmetic or the, the, the window dressing mm. stuff? I wonder about that. And and maybe uh, uh, Biden doesn't want someone to upstage him. He de he wouldn't want someone who takes a lot of energy and interest um, to, to be number two on mm -hmm. his ticket. He wants to be well, the main I, stage. I'd say you shouldn't pick Andrew yeah. Yang, then. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a poor choice. The Yang right. gang is wild. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. you. There's a lot of people who I think uh, feel like they're being left behind because we're in the middle of something else going on here. Nothing to do with Donald Trump. We're in the middle of what I'd call, other people call, the fourth industrial revolution. Is there going to be middle class where, you know, Moore's Law, the IT, the way we're walking, you know, artificial intelligence. Uh, look what's happened with all the retail jobs that got lost because of Amazon. Now people go to Amazon and so all across the country, a couple hundred thousand people lost their jobs. And people are worried. Truck drivers I talked to are saying, well, you know, they're going to automate trucking. I know, and I'm not going to have a job. I'm going to 52 years old. I'm making $80,000 a year. One year ago, I spoke here at Davos about the challenges we face mastering the fourth industrial revolution, which will be a topic of this forum for the next 10 years. About how can we ensure the benefits and the burdens of globalization, digitalization, Artificial intelligence are shared more equitably. Advanced technology has divorced productivity from labor, meaning we're making more than ever with fewer and fewer workers. We can't undo the changes in technology as wrought in our world, nor should we try. But we can and we must take action to mitigate the economic trends that are stoking unrest in so many advanced economies and undermining people's basic sense of dignity. Joe. If you're listening, if you want to beat Donald Trump, if you want to win the nomination and the election, the best way is to put Andrew Yang on your ticket. It is the only way forward. I know you feel pretty good about the South Carolina results, but that's not enough. Don't let the results fool yourself. You are still kind of neck and neck with Bernie Sanders. And 
if we learn anything from the past caucuses and, and primaries is that the polls are reasonable reflection of the reality and the big data analysis is accurate. So if we take a look at the election betting odds.com, you realize that your odds, right, of winning the primary democratic primary has significantly increased. So it goes to 56.2%. It was about a month ago, it was only 29%, okay, for Joe Biden. And, but that's not enough. We have to look at the probability of the candidate winning the presidency in the event that the prob uh, in the event the candidate was nominated. Okay, that's the conditional probability we were talking about. So PA is the probability of the candidate winning the primary, the party's primary, and PB is the probability of the candidate winning presidency. The ratio is the probability of that candidate, once becoming the nominee, will win the election. That's what we care about. That's what really matters. So if we look at the data for Trump, that on January 31st, Trump has a 57.8% chance of winning the election once he becomes the nominee. And Biden and Bernie, they, they are neck and neck, about 43.6%. Whereas Andrew Yang has the highest number. So Andrew Yang has a 60% of probability of winning the election once he becomes the nominee. Of course, the problem is that he didn't have enough name recognition to actually become the nominee and didn't have the resources. Um, he didn't have billionaires supporting his campaign. All he has is the young gang and a lot of people were people who have literally none disposable income. And that's the people who needed the, the freedom dividend the most. Okay, that's it's, it's kind of a deadlock. So those people who needed the disposable income most did not have the disposable income to support Andrew Yang. Um, but it's a movement. And you can see that Yang is, you know, very much favorable, and he has the best chance to beat Donald Trump once he becomes the nominee. Um, but of course, he dropped out. He suspended his campaign because he couldn't proceed. He didn't see the path forward to become the nominee. Now, this is the golden chance: is to put Andrew Yang on Joe Biden's ticket. Okay, so that way we actually can find a way, new way forward. Because Joe Biden has the experiences. I mean, he has the sky high name recognition, but Andrew Yang has the best policies, right? Bipartisan policies, such as freedom dividend and the democracy dollars. Um, so if we look at the data today, the probability of Joe Biden become the president once he got nominated is only 41%. So that's significantly lower than Donald Trump, which is 60.4% now. It's, it's higher than a month ago, higher than before he was impeached. So really, Joe Biden should not be just overly obsessed with the success in South Carolina. And that the fact, you know, uh, these other candidates, Amy Klobuchar and um, Pete Buttigieg endorsing him and, and Beto O'Rourke, that's not enough. I mean, that may be enough to beat Bernie Sanders, but that's not far from enough, okay, to beat Donald Trump. And it doesn't make sense, you know, if you can beat Bernie Sanders but lose to Donald Trump. Okay, that's why a wise move for Joe Biden would be to announce Andrew Yang as the running mate. And that would be an absolutely winning ticket, okay? Because Joe Biden already realized the significance of the fourth industrial revolution that President Obama also talked about. You know, 50% of the repetitive jobs will be automated away in 14 years. And that was what he said about four years ago. So that's 10 years from now. And Joe Biden, you know that this is going to happen. And the energy and solutions is the only solution. I mean, the freedom dividend is the only way to raise the floor and give people, you know, room to breathe, right? Take the economic booth of the throat. And that's what 78% of people living paycheck to paycheck would need. And that's why the, the concept of UBI has been universally popular nowadays. I mean, the, the acceptance rate has rise to over 66%. It's a very bipartisan 
policy that a lot of people from across the party line, from Republican Party, would like. And that's how you're going to build the broadest coalition by having Andrew Yang on the team to get those independents, libertarians, disaffected Trump voters, um, progressives um, all together, right? as well as those people already supporting you. That's how you're going to beat Donald Trump in 2020. Otherwise, you're going to lose. Trump has a very loyal base. And this impeachment um, has made him just galvanize his base. And and also, you know, Joe Biden has this um, problem with, you know, Hunter Biden's Ukraine issue and, you know, all these gaffes. And people would just question whether Joe Biden could actually beat Donald Trump. I mean, it's going to be problematic. But having Yang would be a totally game changer, okay, because people see the benefits of having someone who understands the technology, understands the the 21st century issues, and have the solutions, right? Problem solver, um, who has innovative solutions. Okay. I'd say I've had the most interactions with Joe. He actually came to me and said he's very concerned about the fourth industrial revolution and that if we automate away the jobs, uh, it's going to be a fundamental threat to the middle class. And that made me really excited because I was like, wow, Joe uh, is listening. It kind of feels like maybe a soft VP invite if things don't work out for you. Would you be open to being Joe's number two? I want to be the nominee myself, but if I, I'm part of the team, um, I'll do my part for sure. And one of the things I said uh, the other night was that Mike obviously can bankroll any candidate he chooses. He chose himself. But if he drops out, then I think he would put his money behind the strongest moderate, which at this point is clearly Joe Biden. I've uh, spoken before and after Joe maybe dozens of times, and mm. that was the best I've ever seen yeah. him. You know, I, I think the intro when it says that uh, you know Joe and Joe knows you, I, I think the essence of that was you had the sense that Joe cares about you in America, which he does very deeply. I feel like if Bernie represents anger and revolution, Bloomberg represents wealth and managerial competence, at least you know, to some measure, I feel like Biden is carrying empathy and patriotism. And if he's able to demonstrate that in a way that's not talking about how he's going to win, but actually just showing yeah. those qualities, yeah. I think this has a chance to be a transformative moment. I do think that the most important thing to do is what Barack and I did. And that is to pick someone who you know is simpatico with you, know is intellectually consistent with your positions, you may disagree on tactic, but strategically agree on everything because no president, man or woman, elected next time out can do the job by themselves. They've got to be able to delegate significant responsibility. The president, as has been written a lot about, we are personally very close, but he, de he delegated significant responsibility to me because he can't handle it all. And when he did, he gave me presidential authority. I could do what needed to be done, and I didn't have to go back and check because he knew we were on the same page. And so whomever fits that bill, and obviously it would be, uh, I, I'd be I, I wouldn't hesitate to pick uh, a woman or an African-American or someone who fit the bill that, uh, um, that would be, com again, consistent with what I believe and had the same passion for it that I did. Donald Trump's our president today because he had a very simple story. He said he was going to make America great again. What did Hillary Clinton say in response? America's already great. You all remember that? It's been a long several years, I know, Fairfield. <laughs> but it is about to end. Yeah. <laughs> Hillary's response did not work because it failed to acknowledge the depth and reality and severity of the problems in our communities. The suffering is real, the problems are real. But what were Trump's solutions? He said, we're going to build a wall, we're going to turn the clock back, we're going to bring the old jobs back. Fairfield, you know we have to do the opposite of these things. We have to turn the clock forward. We have to accelerate our economy and society to rise to the real challenges of this era. We have to evolve in the way we think about ourselves and our work and our value. I'm the ideal candidate for this job because the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Thank you all very much. I just want to share something that Joe said to me. I don't think I'm breaking any confidence. So Joe's a gentleman. Uh, this was during one of, or actually maybe during one of the last debates. He said to me, he's like, Andrew, you have as good a chance of winning this thing as I do.
Um, if you win, I'm gonna retire. If I win, you're gonna be one of the first people I call, so get ready for that. Yeah.